Hi, hello, I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, and welcome to Millennial Planter. So the time has finally, finally come, and I am finally treating my plants, my Hoyas specifically, for flat mites. You guys have seen me talk about flat mites a lot recently in a, my last couple plant vlogs. It's kind of been like the center of my vlogs because I've had a lot of these telltale signs of flat mites in my Hoyas and I finally got the silver fungicide and I'm treating them. I pretty much treated my entire Hoya collection except for maybe 10. There's still 10 on my shelves right behind the camera that I should treat but I just haven't gotten to it yet because this has been a lot of work and I have a lot of Hoyas to treat. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to maybe get to it. Honestly, I don't, I don't want to but I should. Anyways, Today, we're talking about the flat mites. It's kind of been the talk of the town, especially in the Hoya community. You, if you're in Hoya Facebook groups, if you happen to watch a lot of plant tubers that collect Hoyas, like it's just a common topic right now. And I feel like somebody that kind of brought this all up was Adam from Not Dude. He does a really good in-depth video about the flat mites. I will have that link down below if you guys wanna check that out. I think he did a YouTube live and kind of talked about it and and he has a lot of good pictures and magnifying glass <laughs> that he uses to detect them, just like all the things. So if you want a really like in-depth information video, then check his out. He does a really superb job and he helped me out a lot. Well, that video helped me out a lot with my way, my strategy of how I'm going to treat my Hoyas. What are flat mites? Flat mites are mites, like spider mites, but they're microscopic. Literally, you guys cannot see these mites unless you have some sort of magnifying lens, and I think it has to at least be like 30 times magnifying. Um, I think in some cases you can even use a macro lens, but you do need some sort of magnification to see these mites. They are teeny tiny. They lay their eggs in teeny tiny crevices of your plant. They, I've heard that they can attack other plants as well, but specifically they are on Hoyas. Hoyas are just their jam. I understand Hoyas are my jam too, so I can't really get mad at them for that. <laughs> and really the only way to treat them is with a sulfur fungicide. So I have this one here by Benide. I ordered it off Amazon. I will have it linked down below. I think it's like less than $10. It's like $9 and change. And that is what I've been using. Um, I've heard that the sulfur just really does wonders for the plants in general. It's also um, a fungicide, so it helps with uh, fungus and bacterial leaf spots. Because I also ended up treating my Calathea orbifolia and my Monstera, one of my Monsteras, because I feel like they might have some sort of bacteria on them or fungus on them. And then I'm also really curious to know if this helps with like regular spider mites as well. If you know, let me know in the comments. Oh, it actually says it on the bottle. It says, controls rust, leaf spots, and powdery mildew, controls listed mites, thrips, and scales. So I'm sure it will help with spider mites as well. Um, so that's really good to know. So some things you need to know about the sulfur fungicide. First off, how I did it, it's a powder. So I just put some powder in here in this little spray bottle. I got this at Lowe's for like $8. Uh, I actually found it cheaper in person than on Amazon, but it's a pressure sprayer. So I just filled this up with some lukewarm water. And then I went outside and I sprayed the crap out of my plants. So I went outside first of all, because it's sulfur, it smells like rotten eggs. I kind of let the plants air out for a little bit before I brought them back inside and then they've been sitting in my plant room on the floor for since yesterday so it's been a few hours it's been like i don't know 20 hours or something i also have my fan running so i can get that smell kind of out and circulating around the room i don't know but it helped <laughs> the fan definitely helped with the smell because it still kind of smelled like boiled eggs after bringing them in but this morning the smell wasn't as strong so that's good so with the sulfur you do want to be mindful you know wear gloves and whatnot but it is a pretty safe alternative like i know sulfur is natural so it's not like a super harsh 
pesticide like other people use with plants like I know some people use really harsh chemicals when it comes to pest um, but sulfur I feel like is more on the safer side for pesticides <laughs> but always read the instructions on the bottles it also tells you how much sulfur you should put in um in a bottle it tells you the directions and everything on the bottle itself so read those so you can use it safely so while I didn't order the magnifying glass to actually detect if I had mites, I did have those red flags when it came to them. And the two biggest red flags is nubby growth. So let's say you have a Hoya that has like a little vine that it wants to shoot out, but all of a sudden that vine dries up. Then it tries again, then it tries again, and you just have a whole bunch of like false starts around the node of a, of a Hoya. That would be nubby growth or you have a Hoya that just hasn't grown in a year. And it's kind of funny, I can put together an entire video of all the times I have said, this Hoya hasn't grown in a year, this Hoya hasn't grown in months, I've waited so long for this Hoya to grow. <laughs> if only I knew, if only I knew. So I'm excited to see uh, what happens. This is gonna be actually part one. I do wanna do an update video, a part two, maybe in a month to see what happens because from everything I've heard and read, people have seen significant changes in a week. So I'm really excited because I've had some Hoyas that have been stuck for a while and I would really like to see some growth out of them because it just sucks having a Hoya stuck for so long no matter what you do, no matter what environment you put it in, no matter if you up the watering, put it in a plastic pot, give it higher light, lower light, higher humidity, and it still does nothing. So I'm really hoping that this is kind of like uh, the thing that helps for me. So yeah, I'm just really hopeful about it. So that would be your two red flags if you feel like you have mites. And then, you know, you can also just go ahead and order a lens as well. I think there's one on Amazon for like $30 that does 30 to 100 times magnifying, um, if that's even how you say it. <laughs> However, I just didn't wanna buy it. So we're just treating the Hoyas and hoping for the best. Now I'm just gonna roll to the footage and show you all the Hoyas that I treated and what I did. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get to that. First we have my problem child, AKA patient zero, AKA Hoya coronaria. She's the one that initially started to drop leaves one by one. That whole bare vine that you see just started losing its leaves. She refused to hold on to any new growth. Those leaves would just instantly yellow off and die and I could never see anything. So first off, I'm cutting off that tendril kind of messing with the chemicals because anytime you cut a vining plant, it gives it a chance to start new growth. And with that sulfur fungicide, hopefully that new growth will finally stick around and I'll finally see some new leaves from this gal. Next up is gonna be Hoya Svetlana. I'm pretty sure she's just a slow grower in general, but I haven't really seen significant growth from her either. Then we have Hoya Fuwuensis, who for sure hasn't grown in a while. She is putting out a new tendril, but I feel like this sulfur will just really um, make it stick. Hoya elliptica, another problem child. You can even see there's some markings on that leaf there. That's definitely some sort of mite damage, but this one has refused to grow since I got it since day one, which is really annoying. Next, Hoya compacta. Hoya compacta has actually been growing. You can see that new tendril, but she does have those little markings that kind of could be mite damage. So treating her just in case. Also, she took forever to grow. Hoya verticulata, I haven't seen grow in forever you can even see some of the stubby growth along those vines so i really think she definitely had some mites next is hoya caudata who just randomly stopped growing for me so definitely something suspicious going on there and then behind that one i got my hoya rotunda flora who didn't start growing until i cut her but once again, we're being proactive here. Hoya Ketz Bergii, I haven't seen grown in forever. She's very, she's grown very little since I've gotten her. So I think she'll do wonders after this treatment. At least I hope. And then we have Hoya Kenyuaku Marianne. And once again, this might be a slow growing Hoya, but I'm definitely just gonna treat her as a precaution. Then there's Hoya I Senses that I have my questions about. I'm almost certain she has the mites. There goes Hoya Rangsan and Hoya David Kamingii. I'm just listing these Hoyas all for you guys. So when I do the update videos, I know which Hoyas I 
treated specifically because like I said there are some that I didn't treat. So now this is the part where I took my little toe outside, I shook the bottle up, I did a few pumps of that pressured water, I don't even know what you would call that, and I just went to town on some spraying. Of course I decided to do this on a day where it was actually cold outside. Last week it was so nice and perfect fall weather but this week it has been freezing. So me and my Hoya were just duking it out outside in the freezing cold. Uh, yeah, I made sure I sprayed every angle. I tried to get every small crevice I could and there was definitely that strong delicious smell of eggs if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, I just made sure I covered and coated everybody. This is the second batch where I have Hoya Calistophylla, Hoya Desienta. I have uh, Dekii, Carii, Rurosita, Chelsea, uh, Serguawensis, uh, Variegated Wayetii, Ruthie, Marillii, Variegata, um, Hush Kuliana, Variegata, just all sorts of Hoyas that I somehow grabbed, stuck them all in here, and I did the same treatment of just spraying the crap out of them with the pressurized bottle. Okay, so this is my stopping point. <laughs> Even though I sprayed everything outside, it still kind of smells like boiled eggs in here. But that's fine. I went ahead and I treated my orbifolia and my monstera because they were showing signs of like bacteria leaf infection and orbifolia always gets bacteria leaf infections, especially when I am acclimating her back to being inside from having her outside in the growing season. But orbifolia in general are just prone to bacteria leaf infections. So if you start seeing a lot of yellowing spots like that, chances are it's bacteria or fungus and i've already had to chop off two of her leaves but i know she's going to bounce back and then same with the monstera i think the monstera i'm not sure if it's either a nutrient deficiency or some sort of fungus but i just went ahead and treated that as well so you can see you can already see that sulfur that's staying on the leaves that's essentially what's going to kill any mites. So this is where we're at now. This is how the plant room is going to be for a couple days, which is uh, annoying. It's a nuisance because I still have to film and stuff, but it's fine. I did move some things around, which I'll talk about in another video. So I kind of have more space to film, so it might work out. But yeah, here we are. Um, I also have my fan running just to kind of circulate the air a little bit more. Hopefully that'll help with the smell. But uh, yeah. Uh, here we go for day one of mite treatment. And I did forget to mention, these are my Hoya shells. So these are the Hoyas I have left. I might treat them eventually, but um, I'm done treating for the day just because this already was a lot of work. Maybe I'll get to it tomorrow, but for the most part, all of the plants that are on the shelves now are growing really well. So I should probably treat them just as a preventative, but <laughs> I just don't want to right now. So they're just staying there for the time being. And then today I finally went and I took some more of my Hoya out. Some of the Hoyas actually forgot about that I really wanted to treat on one of my bottom shelves of my grow rack. So we have Hoya Marillii, my Treubii, my variegated Hoya Obovada. Uh, I also have Hoya Sarawak out here. You could really see the mite damage on the Obovada. It has lots of little black dots. I don't think it's edema. And there's a Sarawak that suddenly has stopped growing. Also Hoya Australis Lisa. This is just a preventative and Hoya Vitilinoides. I also have my Syngonium Chia Pence here because she's had a lot of yellowing leaves. I'm not sure what her deal is. So hopefully this helps. So that's kind of the state of everything at the moment. I'm not not sure when I'm going to wipe it off when I'm gonna clean all the sulfur off um, I've heard a lot of mixed things but I heard a lot of people say that they left the sulfur on for weeks at a time and their plants were still okay because I've also heard on the flip side that the sulfur kind of interferes with photosynthesis so you kind of want to like wash it off within a week um, I think I'm probably going to keep it on for a few days just because I know this mess is going to drive me crazy and I'm not able to get to all my plants and reach everything. So for like the sake of my sanity, probably going to wash it off by maybe Wednesday and then retreat them, I don't know, in a week or so, whenever I'm feeling up to it really, because like I said, this was a lot of work. And then I'm not gonna wash them off until the sulfur is gone because I have heard that while the sulfur doesn't 
hurt or damage the foliage. The sulfur mixed with bright light will. So I know for a fact my grow lights are really strong. So I know that will definitely kind of burn any of my foliage. So I'm just leaving them on the floor and then I will wash it off, wait probably a night and then put them back on the shelves, back under their lights once the, everything is like dried and off. Yeah a lot of work, especially when you have a lot of Hoyas. It really makes you kind of regret your decisions of being a plant collector, but <laughs> here we are. I'm just really hoping that this is kind of like the answer to my questions, especially with a few of my Hoya, like Hoya Eye Senses, my Hoya Cats Burgii, um, my Hoya Finlaysonii. My Hoya Finlaysonii specifically, I've had for well over two years and it has just been that one vine. It hasn't given me that nubby growth, but it hasn't grown at all, no matter what I do. And it makes no sense at all. So I'm excited to share updates, expect updates in a month's time. Hopefully that's enough time to see some sort of growth, some sort of change. Um, if you've dealt with flat mites before, let me know in the comments. <laughs> has your treatment worked? Has it been effective? What have you used? Did you use the sulfur? Let me know if you used the sulfur. Uh, and yeah, just let me know all the things in the comments because I'm coming into this blind. Um, I've never done this treatment before. I've only just read stuff from Facebook and watched videos. So I'm really hoping for the best. So that wraps it up for this really short video. I'm sorry it's so short, but I will see you all in my next video. And as always, I hope you're all staying safe, staying happy and healthy. Bye!